All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022. So getting this video out a little bit early today, I uh, am preparing a members-only live stream a little bit later after the close. Um, so I'm going to be getting ready for that. Also, I uh, just finished uh, the uh, Carnivore course, The Essentials. Um, so I do have my trading course uh, available for purchase on carnivoretrades.com. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. It's uh, $4.99. Uh, it's a huge deal. Um, I can tell you firsthand, I would have gladly paid $500 uh, the first year I was trading uh, rather than the amount of money I lost trading first two, three years, really. Um, it's way cheaper to pay somebody, um, honestly, than rather paying the market. But any case, um, go check that out if you're interested or become a member. Uh, we have two-week free trial. Um, after that, it's 15 bucks a month. It's one of the cheapest deals out there. Anyways, Spider's here. Clearly, 440 is a level of interest here. If we look over on the futures, the E-mini, that equals out to uh, 4,400 there. And you can see, we came down here, had a one, two, three uh, pullback to the upside, and then broke through that. So interesting to see now on the bottom, coming up here, nice surge off the lows, and now possibly a one, two, three pullback, and maybe we can push higher tomorrow. Um, if we were to get through that, the obvious level here, the obvious level here would be uh, 4,450. So if you follow the spiders, that'd be 45, uh, 445, excuse me. And then obviously after that, you know, the 450 range would be your next kind of obvious target there. So for the uh, bulls here, you don't want to see a failed breakout. You don't want to see the market come up here and fail to get above 441, 442, and then come back in. And you don't want to see it take out that low. Um, but for the bears, you really don't want them to get through that 440 area. And uh, ultimately, uh, you know, if it does, it's going to go right to 445 and retest that 200 moving average. So those are the levels I'm kind of looking at right now. Um, if we take a look at the VIX, we talked about that yesterday. I was just extremely outperforming considering how the market wasn't even really down that much. But, you know, it did pull back pretty hard today. It is down 8% here, but still not taking out yesterday's low here on the VIX. So there's still quite a few puts in here. And that's why I say that the 440 area has got to hold for the bears because if they push it through that, all the all those hedges are going to get smoked. And, you know, there's going to be lots of, you know, put covering and so, and so on and so forth. And um, volatility will probably take a big hit, uh, possibly maybe even down to that 26 handle. Um, so somewhere in that range there. Um, if the bulls are able to push it higher. But we'll see what happens here. Again, it looks like to me, we're still just consolidating a little bit here. You can see on the intraday, had a nice gap up, consolidated for a little bit, got out of the 30 minute opening range and then a push higher. And now just kind of consolidating in the afternoon. We'll see if we really do anything uh, in the last 40 minutes here, but either way, a nice update for the market. And um, we'll just kind of leave it at that. Now, leading areas today. Well, let's look at the triple Qs first. So. Um, triple Qs were a little bit muted earlier on. Um, we did have some strength in Apple. That's really been pushing the market and the semiconductors. Um, we had strength from NVIDIA uh, up 3.5%. Broadcom had a nice day uh, up 3% there. AMD up 4.5%. Qualcomm uh, 3 and 3 quarters there. Broadcom, I believe, reports earnings tomorrow, so be careful of that one. But regardless, strength there in the semis. Um, the real winner today was xle though so xle up three percent and that was really driving the market early on you can see here on the charts the triple q's were not making higher highs here in the first hour or so while the spiders had that was because of energy getting a bid here and really carrying the market now uh, when we talk about X, uh, xle in a minute we're going to talk about how stretched it is i think it's getting a little long in the tooth here but uh, we'll get into that in a minute um, we had a few other names here so tesla was a little weak as well this morning but if you look on the daily this isn't there's nothing really wrong with this uh, daily chart candle you know up move and then a little consolidation candle two dojis in a row nothing wrong with that but it was a little bit of a laggard this morning and now it's getting a bid in the afternoon as everything kind of gets a bid there but in any case um let's flip over here so dow jones um, up just under 2%. So that recouped a lot of yesterday's losses. A lot of those consumer goods names are getting a bid now with yields pushing up. The real winner here, uh, as far as the indices, was the IWM again. So the Russell 2000 up 2.5%. Coming a little bit off the highs, you can see it here. Um, if we get a push up, though, and it closes at the highs, that'd be a nice little look there for the Russell. Either way, you slice it, a good move here, erasing all of yesterday's losses and making another higher high. So again, the Russell continues to show leadership and show it that it's outperforming in the near term. And I think it can probably get up to that 210 handle. You know, you got this 50 moving average here. That's a little bit minor. 
Um, you got this pivot high here at 209. I think it could potentially get up to 210 though. So um, at least that'd be kind of your near term target. Um, I don't know how much it can get through that afterwards, but it has shown some nice strength lately and uh, we'll definitely respect it. Anyways, we talked about the semis. The SMH up three and three quarters here, or excuse me, three and a third. Um, you know, getting through yesterday's high. So, you know, showing some strength ultimately. This just looks like a pullback pattern, just like everything else. And it's hanging in there okay. Same thing with the IGV. So, Cloud Software, a nice day, you know, erasing most of yesterday's move here. It's still inside of the high from yesterday, but it did get through the open and the lows. And, you know, it's maybe above that 20 moving average. Uh, we'll see either way. Not too shabby there for the IGV. Dow Transports also was another another sector that led this morning um, while everything else was getting kind of you know hit in the tech land. Um, so Dow Transports getting through that 200 moving average, closing in on that 50 MA. The thing that's interesting here is, for instance, airliners make up a lot of the uh, Dow Transports. And with high energy prices, it's interesting to see Dow Transports uh, get a nice bid here. Jets up one and three uh, quarters. Still well inside of yesterday's candle, but, you know, for instance, energy prices are very high. We've got, um, you know, an entire country that's airspace is cut off, actually two countries, really. Um, so there's planes are having to go farther around and, you know, with with higher fuel costs as it is, that's going to hit these airliners. And that's why they have really come barely off the lows here and haven't uh, had much of a bounce compared to everything else. But. It'll be interesting to see if the if the Dow transports are starting to get a bid here, that may be calling the bluff of the energy prices, so to say. So I do think energy is getting pretty long in the tooth. I'm watching some of these stocks very closely. I'm watching crude very closely, but um, keep an eye on the transports as well, because if they start bidding, that's going to be telling you that uh, the market doesn't think that these energy prices are sustainable for one reason or another. Anyways, uh, bond yields here, getting a nice bid, <laughs> 10 year up 9%, uh, 30 year here. Huge bid as well, up 6%. So big moves in the bond market. I still don't think they're done backing and filling, though. Um, I still think they got a little bit more chop to do. But that's a nice weekly candle there. Um, look at that bid. I mean, completely reversing everything from yesterday there on the 30-year. Um, same thing with the 10-year here. Huge tail candle. So I still think there's a little bit more backing and filling in the cards, potentially. But again, I don't think yields are done yet. And I think, you know, really yesterday's move was just kind of a snapback, um, you know, a pullback rally. Um in bonds and i think that the bonds are probably headed lower here um again not immediately probably need to do a little bit more consolidation first but uh, ultimately bond yields getting a nice bid um home builders do not seem to be too bothered by that up three percent today but they are in resistance i'm watching these ones i'm also watching uh, itb uh in addition to the xhb so these i'm watching some very you know, i've got a couple of levels worked out already on on the uh, home builders um and i don't know if they're going to get through it honestly um, this has been a weak sector, and if rates go up again, the home builders and and VNQ, these real estate stocks, they're not going to be able to keep up. And you know, this is and this is going to end up just being a counter trend bounce. But uh, for the meantime, they're holding up. They're getting a bit of a bid here, and we'll leave it at that. Um, so let's talk about XLF here. So fin financials coming off the lows, getting a, a nice bid here with yields coming up. Broker dealers also up over two percent. We had Goldman coming up two and a half. So getting off of that double bottom, I said JP Morgan, I like that level there at uh, 135. It had that, uh, yeah, 100 moving average there on the weekly. So a nice little tail bit off of that. Um, financials are holding up okay. If rates continue higher, that's gonna help. But remember, if the yield curve flattens, uh, everything's gonna go down. So just be aware of that. All right, anyways, let's flip over to energy here. So we talked about that a minute ago. XLE up 3%. And I tweeted this out earlier. I said, if you, you know, look at Chevron, look at Conoco, you know, XLE, especially if you look at the monthly. There's the monthly. And then look at, look at, I mean, these monthly. So does this remind you of anything? Does this remind you of maybe NVIDIA a month or two ago or Tesla a month or two ago? Um, I, I honestly think energy is getting really long in the tooth. Um, I've got some levels worked out here, and I think they're going to test them pretty soon, maybe as soon as tomorrow. But I don't think that uh, energy has that much more to go. I think this is getting, we're getting into blow off top territory. Um, if you look at crude here, this is, this looks to me like panic bidding. I mean, we're up 8% here. Yes, I get it. There's a war going on. I get it. There's um, inflation. 
we already know all this stuff though and it just it makes you wonder who's who's the one buying up here i mean you wanted to be buying back here you want to be buying back here now you're chasing it at the highs here yeah could we blow off to 120 it's possible it's sure you know i can't rule that out but to me it just looks like we're getting really stretched really long in the tooth um on some of these energy stocks and i would be very careful if you own energy i would trail your stop um immediately so that's just kind of the way i'm looking at it right now but you know we'll respect it it's pushing higher um for the meantime but it it really these things are starting to get really really stretched and i'll just leave it at that anyways nat gas so trying to complete that little bullish pattern we've been talking about so up here sideways and now pushing up to the highs it did fail to break out this time maybe it wasn't ready yet but we'll see if we can get some follow through tomorrow but so far, it's shaping up okay. You want to see follow through tomorrow. You want to see it get through five bucks, and then maybe you can push up to that double top area around 540. But net gas hanging in there okay. Um, dollar index. So pulling it off the top. Oh, interesting. So I'm just getting a just got a notification here from TD. So yeah. So I forgot to talk about this. Well, let's talk about this here before we talk about the dollar. So these Russian securities are getting um, forced selling. Um, I heard from a few people that some Robinhood accounts were getting locked out and not just locked out, but they were literally being forced to sell. Um, that's pretty interesting. I haven't heard of any other brokerages forcing anybody to sell. Um, I have heard of restrictions in pretty much everything. So interesting little theory here about these Russian stocks. Okay, if everybody is selling and everybody who wants to sell or is forced to sell ends up selling, then who's left to buy? It can only be institutions, right? Only people with large amounts of capital that are approved by, you know, FINRA and SEC, et cetera. So, I mean, you have to think all these retail investors are going to be forced to sell and the institutions are going to pick up all these shares for pennies on the dollar. So, I don't know, you know, if you own some of these, I, I would, you know, I would just hold it, honestly, because eventually everybody who's going to be a seller is going to be forced to sell and then there's going to be nothing left but buyers or at least until this situation blows over. And then these stocks can, you know, assuming you're, you, 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 you're you managing risk. I mean, I picked up some Gazprom yesterday, um, just a tiny position. I'm basically treating it like an option. Wow, this thing getting smoked now. Pretty crazy. Sorry, this is happening in real time here. That's not Gazprom. Hold on a second. There we go. So 219, but you know, I picked up a small position yesterday, just a spec position. And you got to figure once these things bottom, that liquidity is that liquidity's going to dry up. There's not going to be any sellers left and there's going to be nothing but buyers. But interesting little tidbit there. So I did hear about that. Uh, interesting that Robinhood is forcing people to sell it. Um, they're not even, they're not even just restricting buyers they are literally forcing people to sell. So I thought that was interesting. Anyways, um, let's flip back over the dollar. So again, obviously, speaking of Russia, the ruble is getting smoked versus the dollar. Also, the euro, lots of money leaving um, the eurozone, going back into the U.S. Again, this is one of the reasons why I was saying the dollar was going to move higher um, beyond the inflation trade but uh, and rates going up. But, you know, capital leaving the European Union, not a good thing here. Nice monthly pattern, one, two, three, inside bar, and now potentially pushing up. But I'm not convinced the dollar is ready to push just yet, but it is getting a nice bid today although it did come back off the highs. I think it still needs to do a little bit of backing and filling. Anyways, without getting too derailed here, that whole thing derailed me a little bit. But anyway, gold holding up okay, kind of an inside day, a little bit of a pause. Won't make too much out of it. As long as this war is going on, gold's probably going to remain elevated. Same thing with silver here. Uh, nice little hammer candle today, but probably needs to do some backing and filling. But again, this, these, two, these two metals are very news-driven right now. Palladium, Recouping some of the losses uh, from the other day. So if you can get back above this red bar high, then maybe you can get back up into this upper range and start consolidating for a move higher. Palladium also getting a decent bid, but still inside of this ugly tail candle there. I just I just really don't like that, uh, that big tail there. Anyways, copper. So see, I just, apparently I just had to um, say that I wasn't going to uh, <laughs> cover copper anymore for it to do something. Um, but hey... It got above this red bar high. As long as it closes above that red bar high, that'd be a negation of this inside bar, which would be bullish. So what do you know? Maybe copper can get back up to that double top area in the meantime. And hey, maybe it can play out this uh, weekly inside bar finally. But 
Um, nice little move there for copper futures. Just funny. Yesterday, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to cover it anymore if it doesn't do anything. Got a nice little push today. All right. Anyways, let's flip over here to the crypto space. Not doing a whole lot here. There's Ether. Just kind of pausing. A little sideways day. Same thing with Bitcoin. Pretty much just sideways across the board. Solana uh, up a little bit here. But um, again, we'll see if that kind of divergence can play out. You know, I've been talking about this lately, pretty much every day. Um, the fact that crypto made that higher low, the fact that we got that bid Monday. Um, let's see if that ends up being a leading indicator here for the market. But um, outside of that, crypto not doing a whole lot. You know, if it can consolidate, maybe it can push through this um, 48, or excuse me, not 48, uh, 46,000 uh, area here on Bitcoin. And same thing there on Ether, really the same kind of pattern. If it consolidates a little bit, maybe you can attack that 3,200 area. But outside of that, having a pretty quiet day all things considered anyways let's flip back over here to the spiders let's see what we're doing intraday so yeah trying to push up a little bit I, it wouldn't surprise me if we get a nothing burger into the close um i still think the market's not quite ready to push up but i think if we're going to do it tomorrow is going to be the day so we'll see what happens here tomorrow we'll see if we can get up to that 445 handle if we get any type of reversal um i would take that as a very cautionary move Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.